Welcome to Sweethearts or Arrivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What's on our table today? Istanbul. Istanbul by Pegasfeel and AEG Games. Yep. It's a game that you can play ages 10 and up, mm -hmm. 40 to 60 minutes, and you can play it from two to five players. Yep. Excellent. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, set up a game, uh, go through the overview on how to play, and there'll be links up here for our full playthrough as well as our review. Yep. Yep. So we're going to switch cameras and we'll be right back. All right, what comes in the box? Let's see. Rules, of course. Yep. These tiles. Yep. The money. Mm -hmm. The crystals. Nice. The game tiles. Wheelbarrows for the, the player. Board. And then the player piece color. So yep. you'll be green and I'll be red. Yep. And we are. Put that aside. For a two player game, you are going to need. The oh, other ones as well. Yes, yeah. I forgot. Oh, and cards. Now, the first thing for setup is you're going to have these boards here. And on the, uh, maybe I'll do it here. On this corner here, you're going to have three numbers. It's going to be the green, it's going to be blue, and it's going to be the red. And how you set up the board uh, depends on kind of which variant you want to play with. The book recommends that if you're just learning how to play the game, you set up according to the middle blue numbers. And this is called the short paths variant. Things that work together are close by to each other, mm -hmm. and it's the best way to learn how to play. Once you become more experienced, you're going to order them according to the uh, green numbers here, and this is what's called the long paths. So mm -hmm. things that work together are far away from each other, might make the game a little bit longer, and you have to plan out your moves a lot better. Right. Uh, then you can go in order, which is the red, the big numbers. When you do it that way, it says that it's more challenging because there are areas grouped together that work together. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we've ever actually played with the red. Um, yeah, we're still basically on. Yeah, we've done the, the blue. We've also done the green once mm -hmm. or twice. Yeah. The other thing you can do is you can just completely randomize it and just lay it out. Oh, willy-nilly. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of replayability in that. So let's do the blue today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the board set up. So explain what we did. Um, so what we've done is uh, we've gone with the short paths variant, uh, which is recommended for new players. And so the middle numbers here in the corner, the blue ones, you put them in order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in a four by four grid. Uh, then we take our own player colors and we start off with one, two, three, four of our assistants and a stack at the fountain. Uh, these are our family members. They go in the police station. Um, there is an extra assistant. We just place them there because in order to get them, you need to get this blue uh, bonus tile. So that's where we place them there. Um, the post office has four neutral colored cubes and they just start on the top row. And as soon as the cat plays with them, you have to put them back to where they're supposed to start. Right. <laughs> and chaos. then I'll have to go get chaos. The four cubes on the post office start off on the top. Uh, in the small mosque and the great mosque, there are two gemstones each, one for each player. And these bonus tiles, there's actually four of them. For a two-player game, you remove the one that costs three and the one that costs five. So what's left over is the one that costs two and the one that costs four. Right. Yeah. Um, in the Wainwright down here, you take all every player's um, extensions for their wheelbarrow mm -hmm. and you place them all in there. And you have three extensions for yep. each wheelbarrow. So we have six because yep. we're playing two players. And then you put one gemstone for each player there. For the Sultan's Palace and the gemstone dealer, you fill in all the spots with gemstones up into your... There's a certain space marked for how many players there are. Right. So for a two to three player game, you stop here. And for a two player game, you start stop there. Um, you take the small and the large market and you randomize the order tiles and place those down. Uh, the Caravanassery, you take the bonus cards, shuffle them, place them face down. Uh, then you're going to have uh, these two here, and one is the... Um, the black one's the smuggler. There we go. Take one good, give one good back, or pay two lira, roll the dice for his... Oh. For his new location. Right. Yep. And then the purple one is the governor. 
uh, which is going to give you a bonus card, and then you either have to pay a bonus card or pay two lira, and yeah. then roll the and dice to see where you go. So you actually roll the dice randomly to see where they go, and you base it off of the red numbers. So we've rolled to see where they start. Um, in a two-player game, you're going to have the merchant piece of the other three player colors, and they start at the Great Mosque, the Small Mosque, and the Gemstone Dealer. Right. Um, as soon as you encounter them, you're going to roll the dice to see where they randomly shuffle off. Uh, then we have a uh, player turn kind of cheat sheet. Player aid, yeah. Yep. Uh, we have our wheelbarrow where we start off with um, no goods whatsoever. And the wheelbarrow will show you what the maximum number of each good you can get until you mm -hmm. get extensions. Yeah. And that is a setup for a two-player game of Istanbul. Right. The only thing we have to do is see who is the start player. Okay. Let's see. I got four. Okay. And I got six. So that means I'm going to get the start player marker, and I'm going to get two lira. And you're going to get an extra lira. Yep. And if there was more players, um, it would continue like to left to left. Each person would get like an extra lira. So the last player gets more money. Right. Right now. So. And we get some cards too. Yes, we each get one bonus card. Your first player, so I'll hand it to you first. Yeah, thank you. And then I. Nice. All right. So, uh, Istanbul, uh, you are a merchant, and you have a wheelbarrow for your goods and a place for your gemstones. And you have a whole bunch of assistants. You start off with four. And what you're doing is you are trying to become the best merchant possible in Istanbul. And how can you tell if you're better than other people in terms of being a merchant is? How many gems you have. That's right. That's how you win. On your wheelbarrow, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six spots uh, to place gemstones. And the first person to fill up that row with the gems mm -hmm. is the winner and the game is over. Right. And the green one at the end here is only for a two-player game. Yep. Yeah. If you're playing any more than that, you just ignore that one. So it's interesting. There's no points. Um, there's no track of points. It's just getting gemstones. Whoever gets the most is the winner. Or right. whoever gets all of them right. is the winner. Right. So that's kind of cool. A little bit different. Mm -hmm. Now, how it works how is... How do you get the gemstones? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of different ways you can get gemstones. Yeah. Um, if you get both of these bonus tiles from the Great Mosque, you get a gem. Same with the small. Exactly. If you get all three of your wheelbarrow extensions from the Wainwright, you get a gem. you'll get a gem. The other way is, is you have to go to the Sultan's Palace and you'll have to pay these resources in order to get this gem. Right. As soon as this gem comes off the board, it's now more expensive to get the next gem. Right. The gemstone dealer is the exact same except it's just money. money. Yep. So to get that first gem is going to cost 15 lira, but then when that gemstone comes off, it's going to cost 16. 16. So it's going to get more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. yep. So how do you get goods? Um, you get goods a whole bunch of different ways. On your turn, uh, there are four phases. The first phase is movement. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your stack of assistants and your merchant, and you're going to move either one spot or two spots. That's it. Mm -hmm. You can't go diagonally, so it has to be to the left or right or up, up and, and down. down. As soon as you stop, um, if there's no assistance on that spot that are yours, you're going to drop one of them off mm -hmm. and then take that action. So, for example, if I went, I could go one, two, drop off my assistant, and then I get to take the post office action. If I move two spots, one, two, and there's already one of my assistants there, I pick them back up and I don't get to take that action. Right. So what happens if one of my assistants is on a spot? Well, if you're, one of your assistants is on a spot, nothing. That's fine. Mm -hmm. What about my merchant? But if your merchant is on a spot that I go to, I have to pay you $2. Awesome. Or I just end there and my turn is over. So, for example, let's say you are already at the Great Mosque, and then I went to the Great Mosque, and there just happens to be two merchants there. I just pay two dollars to each of you, or my turn is all over. All over. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's the movement. Uh, the second phase is if you encounter another merchant, you have to pay them the two dollars. Mm -hmm. Your turn's over. Uh, the third phase is to take the action of that tile, uh, and the actions there's a whole bunch of them. Every right. tile is something different. Right. Well, this one, this one, and this one are very similar. 
True. If you land there, you get to max out that color of good in your wheelbarrow. Yep. So you would move your marker to where you have space for it. Far to the right as you can. Right. Yep. Um, the post office is pretty simple, which is right there. Yep. You just get the goods that are showing, mm -hmm. and then these little counter switch spots, and it's different yep. for the next person. Um, actually, it would go like that. Yeah. And then the next person, it would go down like that, and then like that. And then when all the cubes are down, that's the best you can get from it. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you, you get that, they, they all go switch back, back up. up. Yep. yep. So that's the post office. So what about these two spots? They're very similar. Yep. Uh, the great mosque and the small mosque. When you go there, um, you need to have at least two um, of that good. And then you give up one, and then you get to take that tile. But the first person to get the first yellow tile, the next one you need to have four of the yellow goods. Give up one, and you get the bonus tile. Right. There's four bonus tiles, uh, one for each of the different goods. Um, this one, you get your extra assistant. So now you have five assistants instead of four. You can mm -hmm. do a lot more moves. Uh, the yellow one, any time or anytime you want to on your turn, you can pay two lira. And you can take an assistant from the board and put it back under your stack under the merchant. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of call back your assistants. Right. Uh, the red one, Sorry. anytime you go to uh, the tea house, and the tea house is kind of like a gambling den, mm -hmm. or anytime you go to the black market, which is also some gambling, uh, after you roll the dice, you can either switch one of the dice to a four, which is helpful, mm -hmm. or you can just re-roll the dice. And that's going to help you out at those, both of those gambling spots, which I'll explain in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the green one, anytime you go to one of these warehouses where you get to max out one of your goods, you can spend $2 to gain another good of any color. So those are the bonus tiles. Uh, the police station, um, when you land there, this represents like one of your family members that's in jail. Uh, you get to send him out because you release him. You bail him out. You bail him out. There you go. And then you send him off to do another sketchy thing. Yeah. Because he could get caught and go back to jail again. So you send him off anywhere on the board. So I could send him over here, and then I get to take this action. But later on, if Sharla ends her turn here at the Sultan's Palace and one of my family members is there, you catch him, and you send him back to the police station, and then you get a bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the fountain is very interesting. Uh, you don't have to pay extra money to any merchants that are at the fountain. Cause it's kind of like just a free place for everyone to hang out. But when you go there, you call all of your assistants back mm -hmm. for free. Yeah. So that's nice. It's like you're saying to them, Hey dudes, when you're done your job, so I'm giving you, meet me back at the fountain. Exactly. I'll give you another job. So it's kind of a central place. Yeah. So Otherwise... Yeah in order to pick up your assistance, you're wasting moves to go back out and collect them, mm -hmm. which is not so fun. Yeah. Uh, the black market. That's where you get your rare good. Yeah. The blue good is really hard to get. So what you do is first of all, you get a red, a green or a yellow of your choice. Then you roll the dice and depending on what you roll, that's how many of the blue goods you're going to get. So having that tile that lets you turn one to a four or re-roll is very helpful. Uh, the care of a nasserie, you get, two of the bonus cards but then you have to discard one and it can be the one that's already in your like if you have a card in your hand yeah 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 all right so the caravanasserie um you don't actually put the cards here the bonus cards they go off to the side but whenever you discard them they discard face up here so if you land at the caravanasserie you can take two cards here you can take a card from here and one of the face up or you can take both face up cards there and then you're going to take and discard one back to the caravan right. yep. but you can't look under a card that's already there you have to no. remember what's under there yep yeah um the small market if you can meet these goods you can sell them for money so <laughs> we're looking at this tile here it's one red two yellow and two green if you have all five of those goods you can sell them and you're going to get 20 bucks right. but if you can only sell one you get two you're making two bucks as soon as you do that, you're going to take that tile and flip it under, and a new demand tile is going to be there. Uh, the tea, tea house. house. Tea house. You're going to yell out a number. Well, you're not going to yell <laughs> out, but you're going to declare a number between 3 and 12. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to roll your dice. 
if you have it greater than or equal to the number that you declared, mm -hmm. that is how much money you make. So the higher you declare, the less chance of getting it, but the more money you, you get if you get it. Right. If you roll less than the number you declared, you still get $2. Uh, the Sultan's Palace and the Gemstone Dealer, we've kind of already mentioned, you're yeah. going to get gems from there. Uh, the large market works the exact same as the small market, except that it's it costs more for money. Blue goods. And more rare goods. Yeah. And finally, the Wainwright, you get there, you spend $7, and you get to add an extension on to your wheelbarrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, what you're going to do is you're going to play. Each turn, you're going to take that movement. Um, after you've done actions, that last phase is if you encounter these, you're going to take those actions, um, which is just. This guy you get a good, and then you either pay a good or pay two dollars, and this guy you get a bonus card. Hi, Jinx. Um, bonus card, and then you get to pay a bonus card or two lira. No, Jinx. And then you're going to re-roll the dice to see where they go. You can't play. Sorry. Here. You can chill out there if you want. That's a good key. No, no. That is how you play. You go through the four phases. Most of the time, you're only doing two phases, because it's move, take an action. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and forth. And on your turn, if you manage to get that last gemstone, you're the winner. You are the winner. Mm -hmm. That is Istanbul. Yeah. Awesome. So what we're going to do now is do a full playthrough. Yep. Yeah, we're already set up and ready to go. I'm first player. Yeah. We got our money. So yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video. Later. play with them hun. We're gonna play with them. This is our toy. Yeah. You have Kitty. all kinds of other toys. You can play with your toys. You need to get down Bob. She won't. And she's like really? Are you gonna screw me? Seriously? You're playing too? I'll have to pick you up or chase you off the table. Mm -hmm.